Maybe I will introduce myself first. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Hélène Sechuer, I'm doing a PhD in musicology. And I wanted to meet you because I know that you are very active with the Gnawa from the North in Morocco. And I wanted to know more about them because in Brussels where I work, most of them are from Tanger. And so actually I realized that most studies about Gnawa don't talk about Tanger at all. Yeah. And they just talk about Essaouira, Marrakech, sometimes Fes, but it's already very, very north. And in my studies I had to work with musicians from Tanger, but mm -hmm. I, I heard that their style is very different and that they are doing something very special. Yes. But there is nobody talking about them. Yeah. So when I heard that you were working with them and that you had this project of Lila uh, with them, I wanted to know more about you <laughs> and that's why I'm here. Okay. So maybe you can begin to tell me who you are, Okay. what's your story and why you became interested in Gnawa music. And yeah. So my name is Uwe Dasbach and I love the music since I'm a small child, especially the bass tones, because I was a servant in the church and I used to play the big gong boom, in front of my stomach. Very nice feeling. So this was the beginning and in my small village near Cologne I couldn't get what I really wanted to see in the music, so I went to Berlin and in Berlin I don't know how, but I met African musicians and I started to work with them. First as Rogi and kind of helping for the sound because I was an electrician and I had ideas about cables and microphones and this kind of stuff. So when we worked every day eight hours in the rehearsal room. This was the beginning. Then I worked with them as a tour manager and other bands and the first reggae band from Ghana. With them I went to Jamaica, even to the Reggae Sunsplash as the first African band playing, performing on the Reggae Sunsplash. And I was living with them nearly one year in Ghana. And because of this, working with African musicians and my, my heart is traditional music, spiritual music. This is why I met Randy Weston and started to work as a tour manager for Randy Weston. And he introduced me with the Genoa. First tour was 92. I met Genoa musicians from Marrakech. And two years later, Randy Weston, he brought three Genoas from Tanja and three from Marrakech because he is one he understands there is a big difference between the north and the south and he wants to show this. So and me, I meet Abdallah El Good and he speaks very good English and we are like brothers in the first moment. Puff. It was Easter Sunday, 94 in Paris, I never forget. Because of Madame Abdallah Brucha El Good and his very very good English and our big relationship I was like a student and nights, nights full of talk, not only on tour, even in his house. I was living in his house many times. I take all my family to live with them in Tanja, live three months in his house with my family, and nights of talking and days of talking and exchange also. You know, one day I brought a video from Senegal, from the Juju ceremony. And maybe 20 of his students sitting there and everybody was looking at the TV and all of a sudden Madame said, stop, go a little bit back. And I rewind and he said, ah, maybe I hear something. I say, what? Maybe I hear Juju Nama. He said, yes, of course I hear Juju Nama. But how? We have this sound in some of our songs, but all you can ask, nobody know what it means. Please tell me what it means. And I was feeling like, now he's testing me, <laughs> if I know what Juju is. And I say, you are testing me? No, please, sure. We know this particular sound in this place is absolutely necessary. If you don't pay, uh, say it correct or miss it, 
you do bad thing in the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And it can cause us a lot of problems. So, but we don't know what it means. I said, but it's the same what you are doing. What you call Jin, in West Africa I call Judo. It's to work with the spirits. You have to come all the way from Germany to Morocco to tell us about our culture. It's not. This is the exchange. You bring you, I bring mine. So this is why I have a strong relationship with the Genoa for the music, because I see a lot of African influences, a lot, like the rhythms, the way the Malam sing and the chorus follow. And I see in the daily life a lot of African habits in the Genoa families, more than Islamic habits. And I feel like, yes, this is a perfect blend between Black Africa and the kind of Sufism and the kind of Islamic belief and on the spiritual side. And first really lesson about the ceremony of the Genawa was um, everything is open till a certain kind of moment and then it's closed because here the work with the spirit begin and it's very spiritual and this is why it's not for public. To explain you, if somebody go in trance, he is not living in this material world, he is in some other world and he doing things he will not be able to do in the material world. And he don't know what he's doing since he is in trance. When he come back he has no idea what he did. And if you tell this person or show him even a video or a picture what he did can be a problem for the rest of his life. He can be die even because maybe he die in trance he do something like with a knife and normally you have to die but in trance nothing will happen but if you know yesterday night I did this in the same moment or oh, his mind go so this is why trance is spiritual and secret and real esoteric only from the mouth to the ear and not to be public and do you yourself go into trance? no and you are not musician neither? no Yes, I play. I make my records for my own. I play with the computer and samples and small instruments, yes, but not with the habit of to go out in the world with this. I'm not a musician. And I'm not from the university. I have just regular simple school in Germany. This is why only English and German. And the most English I pick up with the Africans. And this is maybe why I have this big chance with the Genoa because I'm coming from the spirit, from the feeling, and not from the brain. And this is what I learned in West Africa. Many things, it's like you cannot understand. Wow, I didn't understand why they are doing this and why they are. This is exactly the point. It's nothing to understand, it's to feel. If you feel, you know. But to understand here, it will drive you crazy. Because it's nothing to understand with your brain. So. That's true. Well, that's just, I find it incredible because you don't speak Arabic, you don't play music, you didn't study Gnawa, you, you don't go into trends, but yeah. you are one of them. So yes. <laughs> there is something really inside you who links you to yeah. them. And but look, from maybe 100 Gnawa, you will find one or two knowing they are able to play Rashosh. And maybe ten for the table. And all the rest only kakra singing and dancing. So not every singing music is for everybody. Like composer. Not every musician is composer. Even in Western music. Blandy musicians only play what you give them on notes or vocal. And this is, is the same as in Anna. So I, I don't need to play, to be with them. It's not necessary. There is one family in Tanger, the Darjame family, yeah. they don't play Hajoj, they just play the no. table. But I never heard of such a family in other cities. No, that's true. <laughs> now they have young talent, 
He is now 17 years old. And he is the first one to touch Ashush and start to pray. Yes. And he is teached by his older cousins. They teach him Ashush without any... Osama, he never touched Ashush. But the young boy, he prays. Stop! You have to go ding, 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 ding. Not ding, 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 ding. He know he is now pure. Like his grandfather. Big Madam of Tanja, Abdul Kalasifsa. Very big, very known, very respected. So this is, if you really go inside the families, real in our families, you see grandfather, son, and you see young ones. Age of three, four, five, they, only the, they want to dance, they start and they shake. I can see in Brussels that many Gnawa from there, they don't want their children to be Gnawa, yeah. because they don't want the children to have the same life. Yeah. They say it's difficult and it's tough. Yeah, now we come to the history, to the old life, like it was 20 years, 25 years before. You know, very poor, very poor culture. They're even not really accepted by the society of Morocco, because when they go in a healing ceremony, Islamic people, imams, the church, they don't like it, like the Catholic Church. Only them have the right to do exorcism, nobody else. It's like in Islam too, you don't have the right to do this. And the same for the state, for the government. You don't have a diploma, you are studying medicine, so you are not able or allowed to cure. So this is why they only do it behind closed doors and only amongst themselves. Maybe a neighbor, if you have some mental problem, they help him, but never for outside. So apart from this, they only have a chance to make music for marriage, birthdays, some of these events. And only very, very, very little money. And in the, in the ceremony there is a part for everybody to show his skill in dancing and then he gets some small notes under the set. Like all over West Africa, it's the same. Same system, if somebody from the public like what you do, he give you small money. And this is what they earn. So they have a very sad life, very full life because of the music and the spirit and the power. If you listen to uh, Ashush, uh, next, you sit next to Ashush or people is passing you, you will feel it. If you want or not, you feel something. You feel the power. So this gives you something very nice, very sweet in life. But it's like poison. It's like drug. It's very nice and sweet if you have it. But if you don't have it, you are desiring why I and no chance to get money with it. Maybe you need money. You need to give your life. You, you need everything. I know in our moms they are crying. They say, please Allah, take it away from me. I only suffer. All my life I suffer and I have nothing from it. Only the nice sweetness of the feeling when I play. But apart in the real life, I cannot feed my family, I have no part in social life. Yes, it's this and this. But since 20 years, 25 years since the media start to get more strong, like possibility to record CDs, uh, like we can enter TV, Hassan Akmun was the first one, because he go to New York, the first can now be shown in MTV, Hamid Al-Kasseri, he take cassettes, he make first CD, so the young people say, wow, it's a chance to make money with Gnawa music, now let's go and take the things of our father and bring it to the next level, mix it with modern instruments and take part in a regular life. Because before, when I started to meet Gnawa, all the young people, they don't want to have the life of their parents, it's not only the parents that they don't want to have, the children into it, mostly the children say, no, I'm better I go to school and educate myself and get a good job and get good money and good life. They don't want a big problem. But now it changed. But it's also slowly, slowly. a kind of it's evolution. Nothing in evolution is dangerous. But as more they enter in the Western world, and in the money and facilities of studios and television, as more the real culture goes down, of course. You cannot have both. 
big problem for me since more than 25 years. Anytime I come to the border in Tundra, and the custom officer asks me where you want to go, and I say, no, I say, ah, it's real, no. Ah, Marrakech, no. Rabat, no. But where? Tanja. No, you know, I exist in Tanja. Many people don't know even there is Sahara, you know. And it's another story, another difference, because they don't even play the Ashish, they only play the Tanja. But very strong, very powerful, and they are very black. More Africa than the North or the, the Sud, what they call the Sud, but it's not the Sud, it's the Middle. Because Sud is Sahara. And this is third in our power, third in our culture. So, because me, I stay with the Ganawa in Tanja. I know all the Ganawa from Tanja and all the Tanja Ganawa know me. So, and I get tired of this problem. Nobody knows the North, so this is why I want to give the world the North. And not only give the world the Norse, I want to give the same, in the same time the real traditional way of the Gnawa in the North for the future. Like somebody came in 20 years and... But what is the real traditional way? Yeah. All the songs, all the lyrics, everything, how to do the hashush, how to fix kakra, how to make the costume, even what is the meaning of the costume? Why? You know, now I have cowrie marbles all over. Why do I have this what we call or no as dreadlocks? If you ask them, they say it's tradition. But if you come from Africa, you know, this is the sign of the Jujuman. Only the ones who work in the spirit allow to have a belt with cowrie marbles. This means you are working with spirit. Same with the hair. Only you, or you are handicapped, you are not able to fix your hair, you have this kind of dreadlocks. Went people to Jamaica, come back with the Rastas, even the Rastas don't know why these dreadlocks, this name come with Jamaica, is traditional African spiritual master. So what you wanted to... First, my first question is, what is North? Tedouan, Chu. Sakibir, Kinitra, Larash, Azila, this is North. All the rest, Sari, Rabat, Sud. And you can hear if Rem Michal Abati, straight you know, this is Sud, this is not, because it's very different, very different. The Shalabati from the Sud. Very soft, very nice, and you know, it's riding, riding a horse, not lay on a camel and walking in the desert. So it's very different. So you also think that rhythm comes from desert and horse and boat? There is a... There is a theory about it. In Sub-Sahara, Sahel, music from Mali, North Niger, some parts of Burkina Faso, the music is very soft, very soft. And they only have soft instruments, like the bass they have is Butter for water or boom, 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 or calabash. Everything is soft. Why? Because the environment is soft. You don't have rocks, you don't have metal. You have sand, it's moving, it's slow, warm. So, and if you go where are big rocks, like in Riff, mountains of the Riff, or in the Atlas, the music is more hard. Because you have the hard material. You are working with it all your life. For me, this is very clear. And this is all over Africa. If you go to Botswana, Southern Africa, some places, Namibia, it's the same. The music of the Bushman is very soft. The big maze in the forest is very soft. They don't have metal. Only what the nature provides. So for me, this is a very clear thing. To do with your environment. Yeah. And do you know why the Gnawa from Tanger they play the tudel very well compared yeah. to the other ones in Morocco? Do you know why? You have an idea? This is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> very good. For me, uh, number one in drumming is Sahara. I saw them first in 1999 in the Festival of Music Popular in Marrakech. 
15 piece band, 5 tables, 10 cockroaches, and one very old man blind. And when he sing, oh, when he start, feeling, feeling, tear feeling, and then 5 tables, and the cockroach. Yes, this was for me. This is in Africa. So, and my explanation why the Norse have this more Africa than the Moyen, than what they call the Sud. This is a theory of Abdallah al -Gurd. He said, you know, are not descendants from slaves. They are descendants from the people who've been sent out to look for where the white man or the Arab bring the slaves. Some slave hunters come to the village, take some people. The people who remain, they want to know what happened to the brothers and sisters where they brought them. So they sent out from all over Africa, from Sudan, in the east to Gambia in the west and Ghana, they sent them and they all reach in the north in this peak, you know, where Africa nearly meet Spain because here Africa is finished and they see the sea and they know, okay, they brought our brothers and sisters over the sea but they still have this African heritage in the back the drumming, because the drumming is African very normal, drums is Africa all over the place, all the time. So this is why the drumming in the north is more strong than in the south because Genawa started in the north, but it's only for me. And I tell her what he tell it like this. All the others just say a different story. And also, I was wondering how did you choose the Malems who play on the project? So you decided together then? Yes, so I start of course to ask my friends. Dr. Kader Hedera, because long time, plenty traveling, plenty talking, so big brotherness. And he said, of course, no way without Abdul Wait's The boss is the oldest and they have most knowledge about the history. Uh, then we start about where is the border between North and South in this moment first. And when I understood Sakabir is still a suit, I said, okay, tomorrow I want to speak with Samit Kasari. Why? Yeah, because but he said, that's wrong. He's the most known Ganawi, not only in Morocco, in, in the world who know about Moroccan culture is known. He is number one, known. And everybody accept him as, yes, he is Ganawi, pure. So we went, I explained him the project for the future, and he understood, and he agreed. And then I said, but somebody, I need somebody, who choose which malams and who choose what is the repertoire. Because if you ask 20 malams, you will have 20 different repertoires, 20 different numbers. So, very complicated. And for me, I don't want to take this responsibility. And I say, Hamid, if you don't mind, you will be my director of music. You say which songs, who we play, which list we take. And who is playing what? Because me, I cannot say you play this part and you play that part. So this must be come from you, from the Genawa themselves. So and then Hamid al Kasari and Abdul Kader al Hedera, they are working all together which malam and which malam is playing what kind of part. You said I want all the repertoire. Yes, yeah. this was clear, this was clear for everybody. And um, so after I have the list of which malam and I choose. Of course, my old friend of the Abandur, the Ajame for the Dakhla, for the drumming, for the opening. And he's like a kind of prayer. He do the best prayers and all the big winners in the mosque, he is the one who do this. But everybody said no problem. So I bring them all on a round table and we explain what we want to do. And we explain them this new competition. This is no uh, fight, it is a spiritual thing, we have to do it with clean heart, with open heart, open mind, come together and look at the Tudumal. If you open Wikipedia, you know what? First word you would see is brotherhood. So we have to stay together as a brother. No fighting, oh, I'm here number one, me I'm better than this. This is most important to do the clean version of recording the repertoire. And they understood it. In the moment when I talk to them and uh, I speak in English and my good friend Abdelaziz who made the translation, yes, 
And what will be the result? The result for me is I'm not satisfied. That's all. I have some nice colorful pictures from Zimbabwe, but it's not real tradition. Because Mugnawia, no woman. And this is the most important thing in this culture for me. Two powers, male and female, is needed. One alone he cannot do. Lila, look even the word Lila. It says it is a female knight. Because knight in Arabic is Lil. And if you put the A, it makes it female. So Lila cannot be without woman. It's not possible. If only men play together, it will be Lil, but not Lila. And, and now everybody play Lila, maybe only three or four of them, and they play and they say we have Lila, and maybe only two hours, like in a concert. I can say this is a concert. This is kind of in our culture concert, no problem. But it's not a Lila. And it's more than only women and a Lila. More. More ingredients are needed. Much more. So, do you want to make another session of recordings or what? I'm thinking about this and how and where. And you see the problem to record such music, such cultural music, such spiritual music is you must find the balance between the atmosphere of the tradition and the facilities of the modern technology, which microphones and how put them, like a rock band, if you on stage, they look like they are together, but in the recording studio, they have to try and separate in a separate room or some glass walls around them to make the sound much better and more clear to hear the difference of the different instruments. So I to do this with the Genawa or regular traditional culture, it, it creates kind of disturbing in the atmosphere because they know have to play together at the same time. It's not possible to do Genawa recording, you let the mother play first and sing and then the other one play like overdubs. Not possible. They have to do it at the same time in the same moment because it goes. And it's not timing beat, like with a metronome. No, it begin here and it go more quick, more quick, more quick, more quick. Maybe the end is <laughs> one touch, everybody end in the same time. So this is why you have to do it live and you have to find the perfect balance between togetherness and how to pick it. How to get it in a clean sound. Because if you take it traditional, you only will hear big metal tucker, nothing else. Maybe some chorus, but you will not hear this instrument, you will not hear the man, only this one. But this is traditional. But though you cannot present it to the world to let somebody know about this culture because you only will hear da, 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 da. So, but if you want to know, this is a part of the culture. In olden times, if you want to be a man, show me how to build a tibble, the drum, and show me how to build the ashwish. If you are able to do this, both instruments, yes. The next one is to make interviews with the old mothers that still exist. Let them talk about history, let them talk what they know. Because they know things, the young people, they don't know no more. Why we choose this house in Sake Beer? Because it, the fundament is Kakra. First they put this metal in the earth and there they put the walls on. So plenty of things about this culture need to be told. And this is where I see me and this is a big project. It maybe take five, maybe take ten years, maybe it's my thing in life I have to do before I can leave this world to give back what I get. So this is most what I can say to give something because I get. So it's your project, it's yeah. not funded by somebody else who asked you no. to do it, you just... It's my project. It's yeah. your life project. It's a very nice one. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know um, what musical differences you hear 
So you talked about the rhythm that is faster in the north than in the south, but what else do you feel different between north and the rest of Morocco? Yeah, sure. Many songs have different melodies, not only different rhythms. And especially if I compare everything to the southern, to the Sahara, where they don't have the hashish, they only have drums and pepper. It's a different feeling from when you are inside life, sitting with them. It's always the same feeling. It's feel very warm, very nice. You feel like home. You forget where you are. You forget about your worries and troubles from yesterday. You don't think about tomorrow. You are just in the here and now and flying with them in the universe. So this is all the same. So suit, medium or not, it's the same. It's a special kind of feeling. Yeah. There is a connection between all of them anyway. Yes, of course. Every Gnawi can play with everybody. If you are from the suit, from Marrakesh and you come first time to Tanja, you, oh, oh, it's different, but it's no problem for, for you to follow. The rhythm, you have it. And if it's more fast, it's no problem. And you listen to what is the Malam singing and your response is no problem. And same with us, they can play with the suit. Look for my project for the Shabena. We don't have only 10 Malams and one Mokadim from the north. We also invite some of the very honorable Malams from Marrakesh. And some people from the festival of Esauira. They come together in this big room and Ah, brother, I never see you 20 years, oh, we are not seeing 40 years, 5 years, 10 years. Like yesterday, one family, all of them, one family. Because they know, we are the Maui, we are something different. Different from all the rest of Morocco. And Morocco is rich of this culture. The Sawa, the Shia, the plenty different cultures working with spirit. But the Gnawa, different from all the others because of this African influence, very strong African influence. If you are born in the now, no chance to do something else. Maybe you try, but Saturday, Sunday, your brothers need you, you are there all the night. Regular ceremony go from sundown to sunrise. Daytime, they will never touch a hashish, spiritual, old, in a traditional way. So, and if you only can work in the night, and the most jobs are in the day, bless, not working, not possible to do the both sides. The feeling that money is a bit dirty for musicians, for Gnawa people. Money is power, and power is neutral. It's what are you doing with the power? You do something good, you do something bad. You buy weapons, or you buy food for somebody who needs it. And since the Ganawa see they have a chance to make money with, if you give some of our culture for the public, the TV and records, and it works, they make money. So why not? Of course, they use it. And it's, as I said, evolution. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's, it's like it is. When I see the Gnawa, they always are smiling and having fun. This is Africa. Seems like they are happy all the day. And for us European people with our brand, but how they can be happy? They don't have nothing to eat and wow, a poor life. But we compare it to our life. The life in Africa is very different. When I make first tour with traditional musicians, and to bring the food between soundcheck and the concert, one big bowl, and everybody sitting around and touch with their hand inside it. And say, oh, no spoon, no. Finish. Okay. That's it for the day. So tomorrow I have to try. Next day I put my hand, it's like, oh, it's hot like fire. Yeah. Finish. Third day, spicy, hot pepper. One, and I need water. Food finish because seven people around. Fourth day, I don't care if it's hot, I don't care if it's spicy, I eat as much as I can. So, this moment I start to eat African way. And I was happy. I'm very full, you can go for the job. Happy. I have my food, I have my music, I'm happy. And nothing. Either you laugh or you get wax. 
And I learned how to laugh. Because uh, after one, one and a half year working with African musicians, I said, no, they are childish, they are stupid, they are not serious, they are not stupid, but they are not serious. They know, don't know about timing. If you say four o'clock, maybe they come six o'clock. No, and I went back home to my village where I come from. And after some weeks at home, I said, oh, wow, I know I miss nothing every day. They laugh, they have humor, deep kind of humor and they laugh. And then I said, so maybe it's time to go back and learn why they are laughing, why they have a different sense of life than we have. And maybe I am the pure, bloody, stupid student and don't get whacked, put your fist in the pocket and ask, why are you laughing now? So you can spend the whole afternoon next to a mandem but not talking. Many times I was sitting with Africans together, laugh and they didn't understand it by praying. I didn't get the job, but I get the feeling. Now it's time for laugh, and I laugh, of course. Sure. It's like Charlie Chaplin. This, in, in this time of no voice is used in the movie, but you understand and you laugh. The way he uses his body, and his face. I have a question about Mandems. Who is the youngest Mandem you have met? <laughs> because I know that Mandems are Mandems beco because they are old and usually they become Mandems when their father dies and then they get the title. But did you ever meet a young This is uh, a very, very, very big point. Um, Maybe, maybe I never met a real man. It's possible, I don't know. Like somebody, he told me, he saw a man, he jumped in the fountain, in the beer, sweet water, next to the sea, and he come out from the sea, back, with dry clothes. Just, show look what I can do. So this for me is mal. We have something. This here, no way, no way, no way, no way. Do you think you have to be in Morocco for the Gnawa to be efficient and powerful? No, I don't think it's a question of place. It's a question of all ingredients. The spirits exist everywhere, not only in Morocco. And in the traditional way of people work with spirits, if you don't do it at home, if you go to another place, there will be somebody who work with the spirit and you ask for permission. And it doesn't matter from which culture, it doesn't matter. Africa say, actions speak louder than words. So don't count on words, look what they are do. It's also one of my big lessons from Africa. Actions speak louder than words. And another one is, the secret of life is to have no fear. This is from Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first man who take his country off the slavery, off the colonialism, Ghana, 57. And it was one of his big sentences. The secret of life is to have no fear. If I have fear, I will never uh, be able to do this project. Maybe I will think, oh, maybe this can happen, or oh, maybe Randy is right, and everybody say yes, and, and, and nobody there. And of course, at the German way, I make a contract. With every mother, I make a contract. Not only for copyrights, how much money, which condition, costumes, plenty. 50% work, 50% work from the contract. But it's not a problem because this is Africa. Finally, I have some results, I have some nice pictures, I have some recordings. <laughs> and that's the way also you, you learn music. When you are at the, really the bottom of the scale, first you have to get water for the malim and then you have to take all the, the sofas for the lila. And yeah. That's the first step. Sure. Music. And wipe up the room. Yes. And cleaning the ashtrays. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. And in old times, traditional times in Africa, if you want to play a drum, 
First you have to know how to build a trunk. Cutting the wood, choosing the wood, digging, develop, find the animal, take off the hair from the skin, dry it, fix it on the drum. Then you know how to do the drum. First, how to build the drum. Really bottom. I saw on Facebook uh, young Mayim Khalid uh, from Casablanca. Yeah, Khalid Yes. Yeah. He is a very interesting person, yes. and I personally like him very much because he try also to put Noah in the next level. He play traditional. He is able to play traditional, but he also put it in theater. He have group of dancing, theater dancing with his brother and they make like a ballet with Minawa music and really artistical high level ballet. The next one he have hip hop. He have a group of people he play the hushes and they're really hip hop like bass cap and canvas and hip hop. But Minawa, Minawa hip hop. So this is what I like on Khalid Sansi. He's not concentrated in one point, he tried many possibilities available for him in this modern world. Yes, future, of course. It's like with Asma Hamsawi. The first real woman who played Arshur and Singh have their own group of women, which uh, normally is not possible in the Ginawa traditional way, because you have the Malam and the Malama, and the Malama have this role. And she cannot be the male role because then you need the man who do the female role and you will never find this. So, but I like her because I'm a European. Take her chance and she has extraordinary voice. Extraordinary, so for me, yes, she's future too. I like these activities in the young people now. Why not? Why not? Evolution. Yeah. If you fix the things in the past, then they die. Yeah. But you're right, they have to be anchored, to be fixed in the tradition and then they open to Sure. If they are not, then it's totally sure. different. Spiritual part has a, need the bottom too. Mm -hmm. And the bottom of most spiritual part is religion. Have you met the um, Jewish Gnawa? No. In Fes? I have contact to plenty <laughs> all over Morocco. Big contact, but physical, I never met. It's time now. Now it's the time since I started my project, like you. How I met you because I started my project. Without my project, you are in Brussels, I'm in my bush, my village called Willy Bush. No joke. <laughs> so we will never meet. Look, I did the first 30 minute clip five months ago now put it in the internet and every day I see 10, 20 months, sometimes 100 in one day. So it's working. Not so much like you who've been working for so many years. I'm 62. Mm. You I'm see? 28. So where are you? Maybe you are with 48. More far in the number than me. You know when I met Randy Weston and I told him how I start and he said, you are, you know, you are very lucky. I say, why? Because you met in Africa with 22. Really, maybe this is why I'm so deep in the Gnawa, because I have no so much white man education. My parents have a huge library of books. And I say, when I, I want to read these books. And they told me, when you're old enough to get this book without a <laughs> chair or something, you can read it. Here, and then here, and then. Yeah, so this is how they forced me to read. And I read all my life. I was in books and not into teachers. And did you have that kind of problems? Like the Gnawa, they like to have you as a student. Usually when you are with one of them, he yes. tells you not to go to this one or this one. No, in the beginning I only stay with Adela Albert. Language problem because, of course. And most people say, I like you because you have questions. All the day you ask me, why you do it like this, why you do it like this, why here? So maybe this is what brings me forward and, and help me if I want to know something I really want to know. I don't like to stay in front and watch the show or the movie, no, I want behind the 
screen behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, I think we've covered quite all the subjects I wanted to ask you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>